Welcome back to Evan's Quick Picks for UFC Cards. After a break, after the hectic UFC 279 uh, with some last-minute fight changes, we are back, and we've got UFC Fight Night, Sandy uh, Sandhagen versus Song um, at the UFC Apex, which is a fight that I feel like all of us are excited for. You know, those guys are always going to put on a great performance. But before I can give my prediction for that fight, let's drop down to the prelims and start with the lightweights. Nicholas Mota and Cameron Van Camp. Um, you know, Nicholas Mota is the favorite in this fight, and I'm going to start off with an underdog pick. Um, I feel like I do that a lot in the first fight, but um, I am going to go with Cameron Van Camp. I honestly don't exactly know why Mota is the favorite in this fight. Um, just when I look at it, uh, Van Camp, better grappler for sure, and that's what I have. I have him winning by submission. Um, he's five inches taller, which for – grappler being five inches taller and being able to um, maneuver on the ground with that much of a advantage is is huge i mean it, it is huge and um he's a four inch reach advantage which is going to help him on the feet as well um and i think that's exactly what he does i think he stays on the outside you know throw some kicks maybe some jabs um and then when multa tries to close the distance um van campbell look for that takedown get get the fight to the ground and find that submission while he, he uses his size advantage, finds the submission, and uh, gets his first UFC win, and gets the first underdog win of the card. Moving in to the Bantamweight division, we have Tony Gravely and Javid Basharat. Um, I'm going to go with the undefeated Javid Basharat in this fight. Um, I, I do think he could end up being a top talent in the division. Now, the only way I think Basharat loses this fight is... Uh, if Gravely turns it into a wrestling match. And um, I just don't think that's going to happen because Basharat is, has a hundred percent takedown defense in the UFC. He's, we've never seen him get taken down. We don't, he could be, he could be very good off his back. He's had submission wins in the past. Um, but I don't think that's what this comes to. I think Basharat is able to use his striking, just outpoint Gravely the entire fight. He'll look, he'll look impressive and he will get the decision win. Moving into the women's flyweight division, we've got a very close fight here between Maria Agapova and Jillian Robertson. I'm going to take my second underdog card here. Plus, I mean, she. By the time I put this out, this could be a uh, this could be a pick 'em fight. But I'm going to go with Maria Agapova, who is sitting as a slight underdog. Um, I just don't think this is a great matchup for Jillian Robertson. Uh, Jillian Robertson is a submission artist. She is, that is what she does. She is all submission. Um, and Maria is, she's a good, she's a good submission artist herself. Um, and I just think what I really do like about Maria is, you know, she's only 25 years old. She's coming off a pretty bad loss to Marina Morose where she was taken down and was dominated off her back. Uh, and I think, and she is very eager to fight. She, you know, she loved, she seems to love it. And I think that uh, she's taken this time, worked on her takedown defense. Uh, I think she's the better striker than Robertson. Uh, and she'll use, you know, that motivation to get back out there and get that win. Uh, I think she's able to win this fight by a decision. Moving back in to the lightweight division, we've got Trey Ogden and Daniel Zellhuber. Um, I'm going to go with the favorite here, uh, Daniel Zellhuber. Um, this one I am pretty confident in. Uh, you know, he he's undefeated, um, and I think that's for a pretty uh, legit. legit he, I think he's. I just think he's legit. Um, I think this is going to be a uh, a striking fight. Um, Zell Huber is has a five and a half inch reach advantage over Ogden, which obviously as a striker is something you'd love to have. You that means you can really decide the distance of the fight. You know, or and that'll make your opponent come to you. I think that's exactly what happens. I think he's able to finish this fight by a knockout in the third round. Um, I think he's gonna keep the fight at distance, land, land some punches, land some kicks. You know, piece apart at Ogden, and then when Ogden is frustrated in the third round, he knows he needs that finish. He's gonna drop his hands, lose that defense, and when you lose the defense against I, someone, I think of the caliber of a striker that Zellhuber is. Um, I think that he uh he's gonna he's gonna find a home for that big shot most most likely a kick and finish this fight by uh by knockout in the third round 
Uh, moving into the women's strawweight division, we have Loma Lukbunme and Denise Gomez. Um, this one, for the odds being pretty, you know, have a pretty large difference in odds, I'm going to go with Loma Lukbunme. Uh, um, I just think Octagon experience is really what's going to help her out here. You know, Gomez has, has most has just recently fought, so she doesn't hasn't had a lot of time off. And uh, I think Loma, uh, Loma is, you know, I like Loma. Uh, I think that she, you know, she she pushes the action and a fight that I think is definitely going to go to the decision or to the judges' scorecard, no matter who wins it. Um, I, I got to go with the one I think is going to push the action, and that's Loma. Um, she's gonna she's gonna come out hot. She always she normally does. She's not a very slow fighter, um, and so I think that's gonna be enough to outpoint her opponent and get the win. And then we have the a top ten matchup between women's bantamweights, um, Aspen Ladd and Sarah McMahon. This is tough. Um, I I am picking Aspen Ladd to win this fight by a decision. Uh, she comes in as a very slight favorite. It could be a pick 'em by the time um, the card, you know, the odds end, or even McMahon might end up being the favorite. But I I think I like Aspen Ladd in this fight. Um, I think Ladd is the better striker, and I think McMahon is the better wrestler. But I think that Ladd's striking advantage is greater than McMahon's wrestling advantage. I think Ladd can do some work off her back, um, get uh, get up off her back, you know, off the cage, up and uh, land strikes on her feet. I don't think McMahon is going to be able to do a ton uh, with her wrestling, um, and I do think Ladd will be have the bigger moments in the fight uh with her striking and i think that'll be enough to get her a decision win and rebound from back to back losses in the welterweight division we have trevin giles and luis cose uh trevin giles is about a two to one favorite and i'm gonna take him in this fight i think he's gonna finish this fight by knockout um this is tough um but it shouldn't be because um giles is a good fighter he really is but he has been knocked out two times in a row. Given they were to Marlon Moraes and Trikas Duplessis, who are both top talents in the welterweight division. I mean, those guys are great fighters. Um, and Luis Cose is not on their level. But what Luis Cose does have is power. Luis Cose is a knockout artist. And I think what I really, I, UFC isn't really trying to hide what they're doing here. Um, you know, they've seen a guy who has the talent but has been knocked out twice. So what they're giving him is a guy who he should beat, but has the, you know, it's like when they give a guy who's been submitted a low end submission guy, that's what they're doing here with got with Giles. They're giving him a not great talent, but has the power. Um, but I'm going to take Giles because he's proven himself as a good fighter. Um, he's only 30 years old. So I don't think this is age. I think this is just two guys who out, you know, who out, beat, you know, just beat him. Um, but I think he'll just, you know, be much more technical than Kose and um, find a home for his power shot and finish the fight by a knockout or TKO. We move into the featured prelim here um, between Damon Jackson and Pat Sabatini. Uh, I'm going to go with Pat Sabatini by a decision. Um, this is a tough fight, though. I, I like Damon Jackson, but um, I do think the matchup for him is not great. Uh, Sabatini, yeah, I, I just think, like I said, I don't think the matchup for him is great here. Um, I think this is just a case of two guys who are very similar fighters, but one is just better than the other, and that's Sabatini. This is probably going to be, a, you know, um, not a striking fight really whatsoever. Um both guys are going to look for a couple shots and then try and take the fight to the ground. They're both wrestlers, and I think Sabatini is the better of the two. Um, and I think Sabatini is going to have. I think he's faster. I think he's going to be able to. I think. I think he has the slight striking advantage over Jackson, which is going to allow him to find more openings to get the fight to the ground. Um, and when he does, I think he'll be more dominant there and uh, be able to coast his way to a decision win. In the first main card fight, we've got a middleweight matchup between Anthony Fluffy Hernandez and Mark Andre Barialt. 
Um, I'm going to go with the favorite here and Anthony Hernandez to win the fight by a uh, decision. I, I, when I was writing about this, I thought that this fight was a very similar to that of the um, Aspen lad, Sarah McMahon fight um, where one fighter had, where each fighter had an advantage. I think uh, body alt is the better striker. And I think Hernandez is the better wrestler. And I just, I'm, I'm feeling the flip here that I said with Ladd and uh, McMahon. I just think the wrestler here has the bigger advantage, and that is Anthony Hernandez. Um, uh, Body Alt was Body Alt was able to win his uh, his last fight, but he was taken down. I mean, he won that fight in two and a half minutes, but was on his back twice. So his takedown defense is definitely questionable. And with a guy like Anthony Hernandez, I don't think that's going to be um, ideal for him. Um, and I think that Hernandez will be able to get this fight where he wants it every round and uh, grind out a decision victory. In the heavyweight division, our lone heavyweight matchup, we've got Tanner Bozer and Rodrigo Nascimento. And I'm going to go with uh, Tanner Bozer here. Uh, and I think Tanner Bozer is able to finish this fight um, by a TKO. I'm going to say second or third round. I don't think it'll happen in the first round. Um, I just think Bozer is just... I, I don't see this being a wrestling match or a grappling match. Um, and I think Bozer is the better striker, and that's what it comes down to. Uh, so because of that, I'm going to take Tanner Bozer. Um, I think he'll avoid the takedowns that Nascimento will try and throw at him. And uh, just... As he does that, that's going to tire out Nascimento, and he'll land more and more strikes, which will also tire him out. And then when those hands drop, it's not going to be good for Nascimento. Those hands will drop. Bozer will land a shot, and it'll put him on his back, and he will lose the fight by a knockout or a TKO. In the middleweight division, uh, this is this is a strange fight. We've got Alan Amidovsky versus Joseph Pfeiffer. Uh, Joseph Pfeiffer is over a four to one favorite here, as he should be. Alan Amidovsky has been on the UFC roster for three and a half years. He's fought three times, lost all three times, and by each way, he's been knocked out, submitted, and lost a decision. Pfeiffer, you know, he's coming off a big win on Dana White's Contender Series. Um, proves he can finish fights, and I think that's what he does here. I think he knocks out Alan Amidovsky. Um, and this will be the end of Alan Madovsky in the UFC. Um, like I said, I think Pfeiffer should be very happy. This is who he got his debut against. He's not having to come in short notice against some guy that he probably is going to lose to. He gets to prove what he's worth uh, with a fight against Alan Madovsky. Um, you know, I, I think for Pfeiffer, the best thing to do here would just be, you know, he's the more skilled fighter. Don't wait back on it. Don't let Alan Madovsky try and build momentum. Shut him down early. Find that big shot, knock him out. I got this first, maybe second round knockout for Joseph Pfeiffer. Now we have Andre Feely and Bill Algio. This is tough. I honestly, I've gone back and forth in this one, but I'm going to go with the very slight underdog here in Bill Algio. Um, I was proven wrong by Bill Algio in the past. I picked Herbert Burns to win that fight, and obviously that is not what happened. Um, I said Bill Algio didn't have what it takes to finish a fight, um, and I was wrong. Uh, he obviously does. I mean, you know, given Herbert Burns really did just gas out and injure himself and couldn't get back up to his feet, but that was because of the pressure that Algio was able to put on. I think these guys are very even, um, and uh, I think this will be a striking fight. And um, what I like about Algio here uh, is that I think he's going to put more pressure than Feely. I do think Feely is the better technical striker, but I think Algio will put on more pressure. And when he does that, uh, that'll set him up to get the fight to the ground where he's probably more comfortable, um, rain down some bigger shots, which will allow for him to score more points and get a decision victory. But this is a very close fight. Um, but I'm going to go with Bel Bill Algio to keep the momentum and win again. In the co-main event of the evening, this is a very fun fight. We've got Shidi Injukwani and Gregory Rodriguez. Um, this one's just going to be fun. Uh, this is going to be—I think this is going to be a three-round striking fight. Um, but I think it lasts into the third round. 
I think they go back and forth. I I could see each of these guys getting knocked knocked down, knocked out, whatever. And I think I could. I'm actually going to say I think both of these guys are going to get rocked in this fight by each other. Um, but I think Sheedy is going to be the guy that gets it done. Um, I think in the third round, after some brutal exchanges, um, Sheedy's going to land that um, big shot, uh, and he's going to finish. He, I don't think he'll like clean knock him out, but he'll knock him down enough where he's able to rain down shots and get a referee stoppage and win the fight via a TKO. And our main event, Corey Sandhagen versus Yudong Song. Um, you know, Tale of Two Cities kind of thing going on here. You've got Corey Sandhagen, who's the number four ranked contender in the Bantamweight division. You know, he's in a spot where he's had those opportunities to to try and get to the top. Um, fought Piotr Jan, couldn't beat him. Um, and Yudong Song, he's... Uh, He's young. He's the number 10 ranked contender. He's on a hot streak. He's looking to continue that. They're throwing a proven talent at, at him. And I just think it's a little too early for Yudong Song. I like him. I think he's great. And I think he could win this fight. But I'm going to go with Corey Sandhagen. Uh, I think Sandhagen is underrated um, overall. I think he proves that here. Sandhagen is one of the most technical fighters I've watched. Uh, he's exciting, but technical, which is something I love. Um, and Yudong, I, I do think Yudong Song could win this by a knockout. I think Yudong Song could knock him out. Uh, but if that's, but that's, I really think the only way he wins. Um, the longer this fight goes on, Sandhagen is just going to stay back, you know, hit him with things he's not used to seeing against the talent he's fought before. And uh, I think that's what happens here. I could see Yudong Song putting on the pressure and winning round one, maybe round, maybe even round two. But I think those later rounds are all going to go towards Corey Sandhagen in his way to, uh, on his way to a decision victory and asserting himself as still a top contender in the bantamweight division. And I think Yudong Song gets there at some point, but I don't think it's right now. But to close off, I'm going to say Corey Sandhagen will win this fight. Uh, if you enjoyed please leave a like, uh, subscribe to TWSN, and I will catch you next time.